Do we have a test at him? Is that what you get? I need it. I need the test data. Can you take them? Welcome, welcome to another edition of Hot Shot Secret Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Yes. Episode, episode number 93. 93. We have something huge planned for 100. Do we? No. But, <laughs> <laughs> we but, have, I bet it's going to be ad lib like the rest of them. Probably. But we will uh, We'll make sure we do something special for it. So I'll get, get a month and a half before we get there. So today we're going to dive deeper into our LX4 Lubricity Extreme. I know we had it on the docket of few weeks ago but that was one of those days we had so many questions we didn't get to it so uh we're gonna take a little deeper dive into it uh the only fuel additive we have that just does one task lame well we we, we but we do it the best we do we do and and as we always say we like to fully formulate all our products to knock out every problem that we could possibly get to uh this is one of them that was uh attacking one particular issue so it's it is a one trick pony but it's darn good at it. It's the wow. best, I'd say. Yeah. Number one in lubricity, I'd say. Absolutely. All right. So uh, uh, go ahead and post your questions now. You know what? It, how we always do. Uh, we're open to your questions on anything, particularly today. If you want to address lubricity, we can do that. Two lucky viewers will pick, and they'll get Maybe some. Maybe three if somebody chimes in from South Dakota. <laughs> South Dakota is just gonna be a it winner if they exist. ever get here. I'm yeah, going we'll to see. Code does not exist. So post them below. We're going to pick some winners and give out some LX4 today. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Aaron has been itching for someone from South Dakota for a while now. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if we can't make him a happy man. So as always, we're dual streaming on YouTube and Facebook. Like and share the video. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube as well. Click the little bell to let you know when we are live, which is every Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time and um tiktok and tiktok actually they've been putting up content now so if you guys haven't followed yet there is some tiktok content up there make make sure you make sure you follow us on tiktok it's a good place to i told you tj is dancing on tiktok for those of you who want to want to see big country dance like a 13 year old uh here's your chance follow us on tiktok you'll see that but we're going to start off with what we like to do every week our get to know us segment where we pull in a random stranger from the office and get to learn a little bit more and this week we have a little special guest why don't you come up oh yeah you're gonna give up your mic yes. hey lena hey Ka, how you doing i'm good okay you want to mic up you want to yeah, hold mic up real quick all good so why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do okay so my name is magdalena gabrelchik and i am the assistant education person here and if you just noticed, you said that very smoothly, your first and last name. And that's only been your last name for how long? Two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. The latest addition to the Gabrelchek family. There's a lot of Gabrelcheks around here. How long did it take you to spell that? <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I have a weird first name, so it wasn't that hard to learn a weird last name. There you go. That's why we just call you Lena. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> Lena G. All right, Lena. So you know how it goes. We got 10 questions for you. Well, we got right. nine and then we have bonus ones. Oh, and everybody awesome. out there wants to learn a little more about you. And you've got this education background, so it's all about learning and teaching. So mm -hmm. time for you to teach them about you. All right? Okay, let's go. All right. This is new. All right, number one. What do you do here at HSS? Okay, so as I said, I am the education department, and what we do is we do a little bit of HR, so orienting, um, coming up with upskilling programs for our employees that are already here. We do a tiny bit of educational marketing, so we have some things for our dealers that are up and coming, and they're super exciting, and that's what I work on. And then I also help out with the film department. 
So we got some super cool shows, the how-tos that we've been putting up. Please go watch those. That's what I'm part of working on. Cool. Number two, where were you born? I was born in Northern Virginia, um, close to Winchester. Hmm. And you went to school down in the tip of Florida, huh? Yeah. So down at Ave Maria, which is right near um, Naples. I hope that's not a coming question. <laughs> that's where you met the young Mr. Gubralchuk. That is. That is where I met my future now husband. Now husband. Where did you grow up? I also grew up in Winchester, Virginia. Very beautiful. Shenandoah Valley, the Song uh, Country Roads, that's where I grew up. Cool. And what was your first job? My first job was busing at a Italian restaurant huh. in Winchester. That was a fun job. I loved it. Yeah. That's a good start. What was your first car? My first car was a 1996 Honda Accord. I love that thing. But it had like the little roll down windows, so you had to crank them. Crank so windows. Both were up and you were on the highway. It was like, ah! Yeah. Got to start somewhere. Do you have power windows now? Yeah, now Moving I do. On up. I like it. I like it. So did you play any sports growing up? I did. I played a lot of baseball until they kicked oh. me off. They made me play softball. Why'd they kick I'm you a girl. Off? I'm a girl. I was the only girl on the team. So well, that's not fair. I know, it wasn't fair. I wanted to play with my little brother and they were like, no no girls allowed, so <laughs> played softball. All right, well, did you what's your what's your current favorite hobby? Favorite. <sighs> I have so many hobbies. Well, I love give us doing your top so three. much. Okay, well, so I love reading. We take multiple. Reading books. I okay. love doing art, drawing, um, and I also love doing puzzles. Word puzzles, jigsaw puzzles. I love it all. All right. So follow up. Do you do any of that digitally? Because I know a lot of people like just read books on Kindle and all that stuff now, and they have all these puzzles on like your iPads and stuff. You can almost do all your hobbies on like an iPad. Yeah. I don't like doing it on an iPad. You're old school? Uh, yeah, it's just something right. about turning the pages that I oh, just gee, I like it. can't get over. I like it. And uh, what is your favorite beverage? My favorite beverage? I'm going to go with bubbly. Buble. <laughs> I usually start my morning with one. <laughs> They're great, man. And you are now of age. Yes, I am. So, so uh, what is your favorite alcoholic beverage? Probably a Moscow Mule. It's just so a refresh. A Moscow Mule. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. What's what is it? I don't so, know. So um, it's vodka, ginger beer, lime, and mint. Oh. Huh. And it is delicious. It's so refreshing. Just on a hot summer day, have a Moscow Mule. You like put. So you're supposed to make it in a copper mug. Okay. And the copper gets so cold, you can barely touch it. It's like burning cold. If that makes any sense. Okay. And then you just, it's vodka and lime juice and mint and ginger beer. Interesting. You'll have to make me one on a hot day. I will. Deal. Next next uh, first Friday party. Yes. Deal. Uh, favorite TV show or a movie? Mm, I'm in the middle of watching The Office right now because I didn't watch it oh, when it originally classic. came out. Yeah. Um, but my favorite show, <sighs> probably Sherlock. The BBC Sherlock. Uh, that I could watch that show forever. It's good. Great show. The bonus question time. Aaron, I think, said he had one racked up. What? Oh, Aaron, come on. How long did it take for her to last? Oh. <laughs> okay, so then I get to throw a bonus question in. Uh, oh, gosh. We got to do something about Adam. Uh, okay, so in your short time being married so far, yeah. in two weeks. Yeah. Two and a half. Two and a half weeks. Have you learned anything new about Adam post-marriage that you didn't know pre-marriage? I did learn something, and it took me completely by surprise, uh -oh. and I can't remember what it was now. I've got to remember. <laughs> it was something... Oh, I should come up with something really embarrassing. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Oh. <laughs> come on, come on. Think about it. Think, think, think. I'm on the spot. What was it? He does not, he's not like a nice sleeper. He rolls around all the time in his sleep. Like I wake up and he's just like. Somewhere else. Somewhere else. I'm like, come on, man. What's going on? That's not that embarrassing though. 
Well, if you come up with a more embarrassing one, we'll be uh, we'll be live for a little bit here. Okay, we cool. will interrupt the show for an embarrassing Adam comment. We will do I that. I promise I'll, I'll allow that. Okay. All right. Thanks. There we go. That's getting to know us with Lena Gobrelchek. Thanks, Kyle. It's been great Thanks, on the Lena. show. <laughs> Yay. Hey, and now it's time for our Science Corner and Weekly Tech Tip. Were you on this one? You knocked yeah. another one out for us? Yeah, knocked it out. So Aaron is going to explain what asphaltines are, where they come from, and how our Diesel Extreme and EDT can prevent them from clogging your fuel filter. Any other lead-in do you need, or is the rest there? No, there's a, there's a lot missing, but yeah, I'm going. Yeah. All right. You so got we'll, we'll do a lead-in. Okay. Diesel fuel is made of a bunch of different length hydrocarbon chains. Sure. That's our lead in since it wasn't mentioned. Okay. That may help. You got it? Let's roll it. Today we're going to be talking about asphaltines. Asphaltines are long chain hydrocarbons that have a tendency to plug filters. Asphaltines are naturally occurring in crude oil, but typically at the bottom since they are the heavyweights. Most of them are filtered out during the refinery process, so how do they end up in our fuel? High pressure, heat, and oxidation all cause the ends of longer hydrocarbon chains to connect, creating asphaltines. Low solvency of ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel and their low aromatic content cause them to not stay in solution very well. They can be formed at temperatures as low as 140 degrees, which is way cooler than your engine typically runs. The high pressure common rail systems increase the heat and pressure and increase the formation of the asphaltines. The high molecular weight hydrocarbons easily can block a fuel filter. EDT and Diesel Extreme not only help prevent asphaltines forming, they also remove asphaltines from your fuel. The ASTM method D2068 IP387 is a fuel blocking tendency test. The fuel is run through a filter and the pressure is measured. Using this formula, we come up with an answer. A number greater than 1.4 indicates a blocked fuel filter. With 1% of a 5% solution of asphaltines in ultra low sulfur diesel fuel, we had a 1.52. With the addition of EDT or Diesel Extreme, we had a 1.02. Use EDT and Diesel Extreme to prevent asphaltine formation and to remove asphaltines so you're not stuck on the side of the road with a plugged fuel filter. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please call Kyle Fisher at 1 800. Do not call That's me. That's right. <laughs> Lucky caller number 10 will also get a bottle of diesel. Or I'm sorry, Alex Four. Yeah. Yeah, don't call me about those questions. I'll just pour <laughs> you over to Aaron. So uh, I know a little bit about them, but you got yeah. too deep for me. Anybody who's following up after that, they're getting forwarded to you. So nice try. Yeah, I like wow. it, though. So uh, let's see here. Uh, dealer Wall, remember, we are back in uh, the set here. So dealer wall is active. I did not bring any with me today. I apologize. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. So <laughs> I'm here though. So uh, remember dealers, give us, uh, shoot us out a, a decal. Um, our, our influencers are online, our retailers. We just got some retailers up on the wall. Uh, any of us, any of you guys out there that uh, support us, uh, shoot your decal, we'll get them up there. And um, like you said, we're doing a lot of video here. so. It's kind of a nice background set for the for uh, videos that we put out. How about some dealer shout outs? Ooh, Gabe at Stallion High Performance in Belleville, Ohio, right up Belleville. the road. Where's Belleville? Belleville's real close, right? That way. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Gabe. And we got a new dealer on board uh, down there in Monroe, North Carolina, Farm Boys Diesel. Um, I think, yeah, Aaron just brought them on. I think she just mentioned them yesterday. So. Welcome to Farm Boys Diesel. Welcome to the Hot Shots family. Looking forward to getting more of our products out there down to the folks in North Carolina. So we appreciate the support. Yeah. We have a new video out this week. A new we do. feature video. Yes. As you guys know, we've been putting out <clears throat> a new content piece each Wednesday. And uh, uh, this week we have... Now we've had some... A lot of the racing stuff that we pulled from that Emerald Coast first race of the year. Right. A lot of the very top pro class fast vehicles 
this week we had Mr. Ryan Riddle, right. aka the scientist, aka I call him. I still think I he's would a like robot. to express the opinion he is the only one of our sponsored drivers that has beat me in competition. Is that true? Oh, yeah, that did. is true. Yeah, I did. never thought of that. Yeah, yeah he did. He, yeah, and, 750 well, down at Pacemaker. Yeah, but a lot of people beat you, so. Yeah, but he's the only sponsored racer, well, so it true. sounds better. That's true. But but I'll tell you, so Ryan runs <laughs> for uh, the ET bracket class and the 770 class. Actually, he'll, he ran 750 against you. It was like, yeah. twick, twick, dial 750 on the number. So, uh, while it's not the <laughs> fastest classes, I always say Ryan's probably the best driver of any sponsored racer we have. Uh you know, Larson just sits there and releases the button and goes. Yeah, it's over in like four seconds. Yeah, it's it's so quick. But it's really impressive what, <laughs> what, what Ryan Riddle does. And not only that, he runs two classes. So And those classes run back-to-back when we're at the races. Right. So he's hot-lapping that truck to get back to the staging lanes to run the next class he's in, which is just so darn tough to do. And you'll notice in the video, one thing I, I noticed that he says is that he's also foot-breaking it. So he's launching off the foot, not a trans brake. And listen to what he talks about when he's engaging his lock on his converter. He's doing it, but he says, like, I think he said he says America, and then hits the button. <laughs> so there's so much room there for, like, air, you know? And he's the most automatic racer there is. So much so that he's the world champion in both 770 and ET, right. which are the two largest fields that you race in. Right. That guy puts more passes in than anybody, and he's a monster. So if you got it, let's roll it and check Damn. out uh, The Scientist. where you're from and what you're driving. All right, my name is Ryan Riddle. I'm from Marysville, Ohio, and I've got a 2007 Dodge Ram 2500. And what class are you racing in this weekend, bud? 770 and ET. 770 and ET. Now, those run back to back, don't they? Yep, we hot lap all night. Hot lap all night. Did you drive the thing here? Not here today, but a lot of races I'll drive there and tow a trailer home. Now, my question is, I heard something about the lockup. Tell me what you're doing in there. So a little secret I have is as I go down the track, usually about the second gear we like to lock up, but uh, I'll hit second gear and I say to myself, America, grab lock up, and that's a perfect spot every time. And that's it. So you're doing it manually, not computer controlled. You're just getting it in. That's right. And hitting the number and working. That's right. Foot brake, everything's all manual. What round are we in right now? Is this first round or? This is second round of qualifying. Second round of qualifying. Yep. All right. Well, look, brother, wish you the best of luck and be safe this weekend. Oh, thank you.
uh, sponsors or any folks to help you out you want to shout out? Yeah, Firebrook Diesel has been a great uh, sponsor. Hush Hush Secret fluids are just top notch, world class. In terms of training tips, I've never had a transmission fluid to dissipate heat any better. That's been that was my secret to last year winning 7 7 and ET in the same season. I, I'm sticking with it. I just think that's the greatest thing there is out there. Uh, and Eater Jamo, Tater Belt Turbos, Air Dog, everyone's been great here the uh, last few years helping me and looking forward to 2020. There it is. First race of the season. Hoping to take home this W today and hopefully both classes. That's right. All right. Thank you, brother. There it is, All right. the Ooh. man, the scientist, which we are gonna have a lab coat for him this year. Yeah, I, I ordered it, I have it. I forgot to send it to him. Did you get, well, let's talk about it. Okay. I got a surprise for it. Uh-oh. So, uh, Hashtag? and again, the first, <laughs> he's, he's in first place of, of uh, 770. Longest, right now. longest. Of he's, that. He's well, third, I can't so. say that because he pretty much dominated for the last few years, so. Right, so. Shout out to anyway. our buddy there, hashtag LDN. That's right. Hashtag Mr. 770, the scientist himself. So he's, let's see. He's not the robot anymore. Not Should the we robot. Drop to that? So events, uh, July's looking hopeful. Actually, here at the end of June's actually uh, looking uh, pretty good too. I know. Um, well, let's let's catch up on what's happened in events. This past weekend, the H Town Throwdown over there in Oklahoma, we actually helped sponsor that. We donated some uh, hand sanitizer that they needed. It's like the largest street race held literally on a street. Like this, the city lets them shut it down and everything. Real pavement, real road. Um, it was huge. They had a huge turnout. It was hot as could be. Uh, our buddy Buster was there and ran two classes, small, small tire and big tire. Uh, he lost small tire because he, th he thought the guy spun at the line, so he lifted. <laughs> and literally another guy was in his blind spot and got him at the end. Uh, but went on through the entire thing and won big tire. So congrats to, to Buster. Nice. I know that was a huge win. He's on the road now. He's already had a, another race this weekend. Um, I also want to give a shout out to AJ Cassini from Bob George Racing. Uh, he, he got in a winner's circle this weekend as well. And uh, two of our Memphis Street Outlaws, there's JJ's uh, arm drop. And I know Night Force made it to, I think the, he was in the finals in the small tire. And uh, uh, I believe Anthony Hercules whose car we had in the PRI booth, uh, made another finals appearance uh, in Big Tire, too. So 
Uh, good to see a lot of racing this weekend. It looks like it's getting more and more. I know we have coming up here uh, the f July 4th weekend, we've got the Hot Shot Secret Untouchable Race here locally. Street Racing Channel's putting it on. Billy Hoskinson, it's going to be, they got a bunch of classes. It's going to be at Marion County, uh, one of our local tracks here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll see a lot more information about that in the coming weeks. But it's the July 4th weekend, so it's a great time to get out. And um, if you're local, we'd love to come out and have your support. We're title sponsoring the whole series. they got three more uh, races this year to go. So looking forward to that, as well as Diesel World is putting on another one of their events uh, that we just went out to last month. Test and tune. The test and tune. Well, this time they're actually they're going to have crowd. They said okay. they're, they're going to have spectators, and it's July 11th over there at Wagler Motorsports Park um, in Indiana. So we're looking forward to that again. I think uh, we're, we're sponsoring that again, right there, Josh. Yeah. So looking forward to that. And then as we get into July a little more, finally getting into our NTPA. You know, we Woo! made the big sponsorship yeah. this year with the polling. I'm sure Josh is pumped about it. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And it's kicking off, guess where? Ohio. Ohio. So we got a, we got a race July 18th in Wilmington, Ohio. Uh, looking forward to that. Finally get the NTPA started. And then at the end of the month in July, uh, we're finally going to get back to ODSS racing, Outlaw Diesel Super Series for the Rocky Top Diesel Shootout, uh, number seven of that. So it's always a great one down there in Crossville, uh, Tennessee. Shout out to our guys. Uh, at RLC there uh, as well, who put on the event. Always put on a great event. So it's coming, folks. We've been bottled up for a long time. I know everybody's itching to get out. Nobody has any excuses that their, that their cars and trucks aren't ready. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Usually at the beginning of the year, it's like, ah, I still got this to do. Nope, no excuses. Hmm. You should be ready to go. Except you. Except you. Yeah, you <laughs> neither of us have our stuff together. <laughs> Yeah. Except us. We have excuse. Exactly. We got we, we got put into overdrive here. Exactly. So. Uh, all right. So what's going on in sales? What do you got there? The sales. O'Reilly's Auto Parts. $4 mm -hmm. off a 32 ounce of diesel extreme and $8 off a 64 of Stiction Limited. That's right. They're having a big sale. Yeah. Goes through June 23rd. So a couple more weeks there. And Ooh. check your email for those who are signed up for email newsletter like Aaron is right. since we signed him up when he wasn't here. No, the, we uh, did it live. I know, that's right, that's right. <laughs> the, uh, this Sunday for deals on a Father's Day sale. Is that right, guys? So we're, we're not going to tell them? I know what it is. You know what it is? Yeah. Mystery Box. <laughs> Don't tell me what the Mystery Box is. You know I'll give it away. All right, so it's, check your email. If you, if you want a deal and you're not on our email newsletter, Levi's showing you right now how to do that. Bottom of the page there on our homepage, you can sign right up. Or I'm pretty sure Josh always reminds me, hotshotsecret.com slash email. You can also get on that way, and huh. this Sunday you'll get some info on uh, a Father's Day sale that we're having. So, if you're a father yourself, you can treat yourself, or you can. I know the coupon code. Oh, well, there I'm you go. I'm not tell you that either. There you go. Mystery box. Speaking of newsletters, you can subscribe to it right where he showed, <laughs> and get all the exclusive deals at hotshotsecret.com/email. <clears throat> so, let's check who's in, and then we're going to dive into the topic du jour, which is LX4. Uh, I apologize, I had to reboot here, so if I missed you, chime back in. Um, but I think I got all the comments. We've got quite a few here. David D. Oh, man, when I think about it, I suck. D. Ceceris. D. Ceceris. You know, David, I love you, man. I always mess your name up. Top fan badge, rocking it strong. Recently started running Blue Diamond Oil, and I'm pretty happy with it. Fuel mileage increase. And seems like the truck runs a bit better. Can't wait till I get the France bypass filter. Well, great to hear, David. I'm glad you're on the Blue Diamond now, especially since you're you're running that PAO, that Group Four oil. I mean, you absolutely should should look into the bypass right. filter. I mean, um, you're gonna be able to go a long interval as it is. Uh, you've pretty much taken the shearing off the table there with the, with the Group Four PAO, so it's gonna run. I mean, really, you're you're only gonna be limited by the by how clean the oil is. So you get the bypass filter on and the rest is history. So let us know. Well, uh, I recommend doing a, do, still doing an oil analysis on it too, because even without the bypass filter, we can at least kind of judge, you know, how much soot your truck puts into the oil and everything too. So good to hear, David. Dan Zelton rocking the top fan badge. He's watching from Northern Wisconsin as always. Dan Zelton got on the dyno. I don't know, Dan, did you release your numbers? 
but it sounded and looked mean. And I think he said he's going to have a post up. But Dan, if you didn't release your numbers, I mean, pretty good place to announce it, wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it out there. We're yeah, not scared uh, to announce it. Send, send the video to us. We'll put it on next week's segment. All right. So, that? Charlie Cesaretti. I work on emergency backup generators for a living. Do you have any current product that would work for large fuel storage tanks, 500 gallon to 2,000, looking fuel stabilizing, along with ED type, EDT types of benefits, lubricity, etc.? Charlie, 100%, absolutely yes. We actually do a lot of business with uh, large, large bulk, bulk uh, storage tanks, <laughs> as well as emergency backup generators um, in particular. One yeah. of the best things you can do for those backup generators is put uh, bypass filters on them. Uh, we have we have a special kit that we use. It's a little bit of a stripped down kit. It's, it's a little more cost effective, but it works well with the generators. And uh, uh, we, we can talk about that. It's very particular, but we, we can get into that <laughs> if you want. Uh, and as for uh, uh, the fuel side of it, especially with those tanks, as we know, we've talked about in the past, right. diesel fuel goes bad very quickly. I'm sure you probably know dealing with those tanks. I'm curious how quickly you cycle through that much that much fuel. I know a lot of people bulk buy it, and you really want to treat it. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to have to. What's the term you always use? Condition. And there's another one. Ooh, a bigger one than that. Yeah, bigger one than that one. That's the biggest word I know. <laughs> Jesus, Pete. Uh, uh, shocker, treater, something like that. Hmm. Okay. Once once it goes bad, you know, so you don't want to get there. So, uh, Charlie, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you shoot me a message? I'll yeah. follow up with you right afterwards. This, this and is a long. Conversation. It is a long conversation, but oh. we have great account executives here um, that set these type of uh, systems up for guys like you that are treating bulk tanks and have that many generators. And we have a really nice program for that. And we have a really, really long success record with it too, with other companies too. So we can show you what we've done in some other places. And um, um, yeah. it's what a lot of our, our average truck guys don't know how much other side business we do outside of trucks on the road, but we've got the right. perfect setup for you. So Charlie, give me a call and uh, or I'll find you afterwards. Troy Kennedy's in. He didn't oh, miss an episode. Question. Any reservations about using FR3 or the RV spray on the synthetic rollers and screws of 3D printers? Woo. Ooh, Troy. Troy. I'm, I'm passing that one to you. With all your 3D printing knowledge. Right. <laughs> uh, I would go FR3. It's got homework. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm not going to answer that question. Right, you got I'm, homework. Right, that's a homework question. All right, Unfortunately, Troy. so. Aaron's got homework. Um, frankly, I don't know anything about the synthetic rollers and screws of a 3D yeah, printer. Yeah, I sure don't. I'm going to guess, you know, a dab of FR3 is really your money maker there. I would not put the RV spray on it. That's more of a spray grease. Mm. So, uh, but Troy, you know, we'll look it up. And I love when you make Aaron have homework, so. Tune in next week and you'll have your answer. Mel is in here rocking a top fan badge too. Look at you guys. We used FR3 on the Central Ohio Power Wheels drag racing. We took winner and runner up spots in the 12 volt and 14 volt classes. Tommy and Adele Robinson had a blast in South Carolina. We are off to Tennessee this weekend. Awesome, Mel. Well, congrats. We love to support those guys and glad to see. I didn't know you, you were traveling that far to compete now. So um, that's awesome. Glad to hear, Mel. Keep it up, bud. Send us some pictures, man. Tag us. These guys, these guys love to share that stuff. Uh, Troy's responding to Charlie. He says, Charlie, all the products will do well with those gens. They do have a stability factor in those products to prevent algae. That is true. Mel says, Hot Shots products are amazing. We know, Mel. Thanks for reassuring us. <laughs> That's my buddy there. Troy Kennedy says, Mercus will be filming again soon. France filter install on a muscle car in editing now. Cool. So check out Mercus Garage on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The Chevelle? Uh, is it the Chevelle, Troy? Yeah, probably. There was another one there looking at a Pontiac. I, th I, think, I, I think I saw. Hmm. I don't know if they ever went that route. Uh, Eric Wilkes says, I have a question about FR3. I know you guys have said that Stix Eliminator has some Group 3 in it. Is that the same for FR3? Boom, I love when people ask us about Perfect. groups of oil. Yeah, no doubt. we got an educated audience. I love Indeed it. Indeed we do. And to educate them further, FR3 contains zero group three base oils. It is all group five. Wow. What do you think of that? 
I wasn't ready for that one. I would I would have guessed wrong. It's all group five. It's There's a, group four in there. It's a tr it's a modified group four. It right. is a it's a modified PAO. So technically, it's a group five, but we we can call it. It's we, a collection we, of really nice esters. We can go either or. Yeah. Correct. There's multiple esters, right? Yes. And in both in sixteen and number <clears throat> three. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So. But the FR three does not contain any mineral based oil. Well, there you go. Or group. Yeah, group three oil. There you go. So neither of them do, Eric. Um, I hope that answers your core question behind that, but it was an interesting question. So thanks, bud. Uh, Troy Kennedy says, FR3 is his own additive. It is added to the main product lines, which is true. Josh Steinmetz is watching. Thanks, Josh. <clears throat> he's, Toots watching. He's dual watching. Instead Toots of says, hey, <laughs> gays. Think you meant guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Toot. Wow. <laughs> Mark Nevis is watching. I'll tell you what, Mark was the one. He's he's the tuner for Buster. He's the one that got them down the track. So congratulations, Mark. I don't know if you're tuned in earlier, but uh, uh, we are talking about uh, Buster's win this weekend. So I know you had a lot to do with that, getting two cars down the track uh, the other day. So congrats on that. James Bruce says, NTPA is not a race. It's distance. Get it right. Did I say race? <laughs> I said racing in general. I, all right, James. James is going to call me and cuss me out later. You he bet. always does. So, yeah. Thomas Walchelski says, looking forward to trying the new RV slide. Well, it's now available, right, Levi? Yeah. So, <laughs> there, two weeks ago. There you go. So, you can order it right now, Thomas. And finally, Dan Selden with his top band badge. I think he just wants to keep pushing his top band badge. I'll let some of it out, and I will. we will say we made big power. And the video I sent you and will be posting was, wow, 1,137 wheel horsepower. That a boy, Dan. That a boy. <laughs> Big thanks to all the guys at Truck Source Diesel and the Hot Shot Secret. Temps look good and everything held up great. Awesome. Awesome, Dan. That thing looks mean. Looking forward to seeing you out here soon, Dan. I know that that, that build's been uh, quite a bit for you, so... So Brian Fidesz just threw in there, any benefits to adding LX4 to small gasoline engines? That's a great lead in as now we're all caught up. So let's jump into LX4. All right. Let's lead off with launching and knock Brian's question out of, the, out of the, right away. Is there a benefit to putting LX4 in the fuel into a small engine? Gasoline. Absolutely. Absolutely. Upper cylinder lubricant. Exactly. Yeah. The, and again, when, when we talk about uh, small engines, if you're talking about your, your garage, your small equipment and your lawn and garden equipment type of stuff, um, it's easier just to treat your bulk tank, you know, if you got yeah. a five, ten gallon. You don't want to put three millimeters in your yeah. tank, come on. you know what, we're, we're talking one ounce per ten gallons, right? Right. So it's a pretty potent product um, to get the lubricity levels that high. Both, and that, that treatment rate is both for gasoline and diesel. Correct? Check. And alcohol. Absolutely. E85, alcohol. You name it. So uh, knowing that the reservoirs are pretty small on some of your small power equipment, uh, go ahead and treat the uh, tank and then you... And then you can share with all of all of your your lawn equipment. They all can yeah. use it. So <laughs> now, when you're talking about upper cylinder lubricant, even on a well, we were talking about you got you were out trying to blow some stuff up yesterday, right? Trying. To, well, well, there was a mess out there. <laughs> <laughs> like an oil spill, like an Exxon Valdez well, pulled up. Uh, we weren't exactly trying to blow it up. We were trying to clean it up. Okay. But by doing that, we had to dirty it up. Ah, I see what you did there. So, unfortunately, the the design of that particular motor wasn't there wasn't enough oil that passed through it to provide a good test. So we so, are on the hunt for a new motor. Well, good. So you can dirty it up. That's right, and then clean it up. So when we talk about upper cylinder lubricants, how's that functionally? How, how, what's the benefit of of keeping them lubricated? Uh, reduced reduced wear on the cylinder walls and piston rings. And when they say upper, why, why, explain that out. What's the difference between lower cylinder? Well, typically some oil does get up through in the cylinder walls, mm -hmm. but this comes in from the top side instead of on the bottom right. from your oil. Right. So, uh, I'll tell you, I got a sneak peek at one of our new videos that we just did with uh, our friends down at, uh, at Truck U. Really? Or maybe it was, was it Truck U? Maybe it was Car Guys. I'll have to check. <laughs> It's not out yet, so we can't show it. I probably can't even explain it. Can I explain it? Yeah, well, let's, well, let's explain the science behind it. 
I don't know if you saw it yet, but no. It, okay, sure did. It, it, it was talking about friction. Okay. And one thing that I never really took into to account too much was the stroke of the piston mm -hmm. that at uh, you know at full speed in the middle of the stroke. Right. But then it has to slow to stop and turn down. Mm -hmm. So that upper part of the cylinder there actually sees less speed. Right. Where you, the film strength starts to break down even more. Hence, that's why you need more of a protection right. up there. Same thing on the bottom, you know. But you also And can, the rod length changes the angle. Right. Here we go. And the longer the rod, the more it stays up at top dead center. Right. And right. bottom dead center. And so well, we so, know it's down at the bottom as that as that piston's up there, it's getting enough lubrication down at the bottom end, you know. But right. the, the top side's really, you know, on your fuel side, it's really tough to get lubrication. Right. So hence, when you're only lubricating with the fuel itself, to have the lubrication in the fuel there gives a great upper cylinder lubricant. Correct. Especially when that, that ring is <laughs> changing directions up there. Yep. There you go. So that's why it's that's great in the gasoline upper cylinder lubricant. Um, as far as on the diesel side of things, we need the lubrication because the diesel fuel is so terribly dry. As we right. talked about before, the back in the day, the diesel fuel was really good stuff. Well, it was never really good stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna take that back. It's always been an inch from garbage, but at least they put a lot of sulfur in it and the sulfur created a lot of lubricity. Well, you know, as they started mandating that, they started pulling it out. One thing is important to remember, um, I know our buddy Matt Rice from DNR Auto was just here and he just picked up an older 7.3 that's awesome. I don't know if you got to see it when he was here, but it's bad. But some of these older vehicles that were made and developed and uh, before they started restricting the fuel, right. at the time, they, they, they never planned on that motor seeing dry fuel like, right. like we got now. So especially if you've got an old, older, older diesel truck out there, I mean, it really never was made to have this type of dry fuel that we got right. now. So you gotta remember when they first switched to low sulfur diesel fuel, they took 99% of the sulfur out. And then when they made the second change to ultra low sulfur diesel, they took 99% of the remaining 1% out. So now we have 99.99% <laughs> of, the, of the sulfur out of it, which creates extremely dry fuel. And what happens with the dry fuel? Well, on the fuel side, the only thing that is lubricating everything from your lines to your fuel pump, right to your rails, to your injectors, is the fuel itself. So, uh, and all those mechanical pieces need lubrication. Mm -hmm. So that's why we see premature failure in those type of fuel side components. Correct. We got more on LX4. So what was the motivation you had? Because you were the key guy behind this product. Well, what, what motivated us to actually make, we mentioned earlier that we have, we have a multi-purpose products. Why do we so, go with a one trick pony? I have, I have an additional reason that I'm not allowed to say because I it's not hunch. do it I got a hunch but. right so as you know a lot of the professional racers pit crew mechanic folks were coming up to you at these events that we race at sorry that we sponsor and we're com complaining about fuel system failures injectors pumps things of that we nature we can hear them going down the track popping. yeah yes. so <clears throat> we wanted to make the diesel racing fuel better right but not only that the regular pump diesel better as well to eliminate all these fuel issue or fuel system catastrophic failures. Right. Um, I and have, then ironically came th those two things we were looking at, not only just the race fuel, which already was just super dry, uh, and the fact that there's a big problem with the CP4 pumps. Yeah. Uh, which we'll dive into when we get into the numbers a little bit. Yeah. So when you were formulating this, like what kind of, what kind of challenges so, did you run into developing uh, a, a lubricity only product. The biggest challenge was I don't pay attention or listen to people. <laughs> That's sometimes good, but. <clears throat> the biggest challenge, honestly, was going from our core belief of a fully functional product. So right. basically, I formulated a new EDT and those results were pretty stinking good. And then I was all happy, like, look, look at what I did. And they're like, uh, you were supposed to invent a lubricity additive. So I went back to the table and redid LX4 to be a lubricity only additive that we now use in LX4 or in EDT. EDT. Yeah. 
So the challenge was details. Right. <laughs> or, yeah, or not getting clarification on the entire scope of the project right. up front. Right. Um, I just took it upon myself, like, oh, we make fully, fully formulated products. Woo. Well, and, and, and we do. Um, and because it was so specific, um, like you said, it's now in our EDT. So, right. but sometimes people, do you need a fuel stabilizer and a race fuel truck that's going, you know, a five gallon tank, you know, going down the track, right. eight mile time? No. So do you need a fully formulated product for that? Not necessarily. Yeah. Is EDT a, a great one. benefit in those? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. You're not going yeah. to hurt anything, but those just looking for it. Or some that specifically with a CP4 pump mm -hmm. and the problems they have with them, they may not be additive believers. We have them out Agreed. there. So we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into, you know, we already know the marketplace we're in with a bunch of right. bad products out there. So let's address their problem specifically. Right. Those out there that say, I just need extra lubricity in my fuel to protect my pump. Well, boom, there you and go. And we've it is. had a lot of those phone calls. Yeah. A lot of them. And, and we've actually had a lot of converts over to EDT because a lot of people that have found our products for the first time with LX4, right. We'll then yeah. follow up and say, well, what's the difference between this and EDT? And I'll say, well, it's got all the LX4 in it, plus this, 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 <laughs> and this. And it's like, well, if I'm pouring it anyway, why don't I get all the other stuff? It's like, that product's there for you. Or if you just want yeah. straight lubricity, it's here for you as well. So a couple questions we get from it you can knock out. Can you use it in colder mm. climates? Are there any issues with it? Excellent that? question. It is. I know why that's a good question, too. <laughs> Obstacle number two <laughs> that I didn't mention. Uh, absolutely in colder climates. However, once you get below about 40 degrees, you should start using our D-Wag. And you can throw the LX4 on top of that right. with no issues. It changes nothing on the cold filter plugging point. So you're all good. Okay. Yeah, I remember so, we had that question a lot when we first dropped LX4. Right. And it's... Uh, you know, will, it, will that freeze in the bottle? Absolutely. Right. So it's just like, luckily it's not winter. We don't have to take this question too much right now. <laughs> right, right. But people often get confused in the winter with our diesel winter anti-gel. The bottle itself will freeze, start to right. gel up. And they're going, what kind of product is this? The gel's on its own. It's supposed to keep my fuel ungelled. Well, it's it's that chemistry stuff. <laughs> you know, so it mixes with the diesel fuels when it activates and protects it. Same thing with the LX4. LX4 in fuel especially, you know, with, with your mixed EDT or DWAG, it's right. not going to gel up. Right. Uh, on its own, it can freeze. So it does have a, it does have a, a freeze point to it. Um, other question was, is it useful in high horsepower, high horsepower engines, Whew. such as, can we even use it in methanol? I'm going to do a homework question on that. Really? I don't remember. It can. Did it? Yes. Okay. I know I did. Because I had asked. I know I did E85, and we've done. It's been a while since I've tested it. Honestly. Yeah, you looked it up for me. Um, we've done E85. We've done ethanol, methanol, diesel, diesel, race diesel, uh, M109 uh, gasoline. Uh, I don't think there's anything that we haven't tried it in yet that had a problem. There isn't really a fuel that couldn't benefit from lubricity. No. So, but if you have a weird one out there, if you have a specific fuel that, that's not on the average list, give us a call. We'll look it up for you. Yeah. We'll let you know. All right, we already knocked out that it's diesel and gas. Now, with LX4, is CP4 pump issues a thing of the past? Haha. <laughs> so we have to say there's always the probability that you'll be of the 1% failure weight from the manufacturer. Right. So just because you use LX4 does not mean that you're taken off of that list. Correct. So I want to go farther. I'm okay. going farther. Yes, it's off the table. Because anything that inside a manufacturer's um, considered manufacturer defect means this product works as as designed. So the CP4 pump works as designed with proper lubricity levels. Right. Anything can can go bad on a on a on a vehicle, but it's not going to be caused by the fuel. Correct. If you use this product. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know we have a, uh, I think Kevin wants to join us. Kevin wants he's to join us? us? He's on this normal pacing. Well. Um, so let's <laughs> dive into the CP4. Because that really kind of also was another one of these things that kind of helped us. Hey, uh, is that CP4 around here? 
It is not. It's it got, not. It got sent for a TV Oh, show. okay, that's right. So. Oh, we just gave it away. We have a special guest on the Stacy David show, Gears. Oh, cool. It's our CP4 pump. Oh, cool. All right. So. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> not so much of a mystery box now, is it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so let's dive into the CP4. We had a lot of questions about this. Um, to put it into a summary, Bosch makes these these pumps for everybody. Uh, right. Ford, Dodge, you know, you name it. Um, they all they all use the, the the Bosch pumps, and the CP3 pump was a very good pump. Uh, there really was never never an issue with it. They weren't they weren't replacing it because they were trying to improve upon it. It was honestly a cost cutting measure. They found out to how to make them more efficiently, and they can make them more efficiently and cheaper now. The problem is the CP4 pump, uh, they had they made a little boo-boo when they designed it, and it uh -huh. was designed based on European fuel specs. So we're gonna get into what, some, some Micron test talk now. So this is the, what's your test called? It's the ASTM D6079. 6079. And what that is, it's a wear scar test that test the lubricity of a fuel of anything really you need oil too right mm, yeah yeah can, so, so any type of like like li lubricity agent so what they do is they put the 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 liquid the the, the lubricity whatever you we're testing with onto a piece of metal and then a pin rubs against it and scrapes try to scrape the metal away <laughs> The better, uh, the better the lubricity is, the more it protects the metal, the less metal is gouged out. The worse it is, the less it protects and you get a deeper wear scar, as they call it. Correct. So that is how they measure lubricity levels in fuel. Um, and that's how they put fuel standards out. So in Europe, the, the wear scar line where they draw on the sand is at 460 Correct. microns. So that means if they, if you were to take European fuel and test it on there and see how much it gouged out, it would gouge out less than 460 microns of, of steel out of that, that test plate. Uh, anything more and it, it won't, wouldn't meet spec. You couldn't use the fuel. Hopefully it's even less than that. Hopefully it's yeah. even, you know, better fuel in America and even including the engine manufacturers association of America agrees with Europe. They say 460 Correct. Yeah. is, is the safe for that. diesel fuel. That's got enough lubricity in it to, to, to you know, protect an, uh, an engine. Well, but American standards of diesel fuel, for some reason, they say 520 is fine, which means it's that much more dry. So you can go to a pump today in America and get fuel that is as dry as 520 microns on a wear scar test, yeah. um, which is really dry and that's bad stuff. Hopefully you've got better fuel near you. Um, there's, I mean, we've seen, we've tested fuel down as low as 300, like out of the pump. That is like <laughs> awesome fuel. Yeah. If you fortunately have, have something like that, it'll go back to what we were saying earlier. You probably don't even need our product. If you can guarantee you're getting fuel that good every single time at the pump, and as we know, it changes every time. You can go across the street, the next month it's different and everything. But if you can secure a good fuel source like that, that's the best thing you can do for your, your fuel system. Uh, but legally anybody can in america can sell up to 520 right. on that wear, wear scar test so what we what we found or not us uh i don't know who studied it one of the big big boy companies did and they they found that the failure rates with the new cp4 pump were less than one percent across the board in europe and now this is the exact same trucks exact same pumps uh no difference at all coming straight from the manufacturer in, in production vehicles. And they were under under a 1%, which is considered under uh, manufacturer defect, which means there's no problem with them. Unless there's a defect from the factory, then you can count on this pump going and it's 100,000 miles or whatever they guarantee. Uh, the exact same trucks here in America, suddenly we started seeing a spike in failure rates. And it got it's up to eight to 9%, yeah. something somewhere between around 8% of these CP4s are failing. That is an that is a catastrophic number. <laughs> I mean, you know, almost almost one out of ten pumps are failing. Now the worst part is when they fail. Oh my! They will they yes. will shred metal all the way down the system, all the way to the injector tips, and you're talking upwards of a six thousand dollar replacement job because you got to replace everything now. 
all because you had a failure on the fuel pump. Uh, the industry's tried to uh, protect this. There's some good solutions out there. Um, I think S and S or, or, or there's a few companies that make like, like a downstream catch can, basically that people yeah. pay a lot of money to put on their system just in case that, that, that fuel pump fails. And then that way you only have to replace everything in front of it. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy that you have, you have to do that, you know, like um, just in prevention, then it might, might be, you know, go downstream and, and knock everything out. So, uh, but in looking at the two differences between the European standards and the American standards, and the only difference between the two pumps are the fuel going in them. Well, that's the difference yeah. between 520 micron fuel mm -hmm. and 460. Right. The pump wasn't designed, it was designed for 4, 460 micron fuel or less. So as soon as it start catching our American ultra, ultra <laughs> low sulfur diesel, it starts making these pumps fail prematurely. And that is the difference. So getting back to this initial question, can LX4 prevent that pump from failing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you can get your fuel down under 460, you will theoretically be on the same standard as being on European fuel, which has no problem with this at all. If you get it passed down lower, it's even that much more protection you're going to have. At the end of the day, we still have a metal metal surface. That's why I wish we had it with us today, but we, but we can show it another time. Right. Um, but it's like on a roller cam. Right, exactly. And, 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 and the only thing that's lubricating is that fuel. So if we get that, uh, uh, the lubrication in there, get the wear scar down, um, that's less metal being worn away and prolong the life of the vehicle, uh, of the fuel system. So yeah. that gets back to, is the CP4 issues a thing of the past when using a product like this? Yes. Yes, now you're on a full yes with me. I'm still on the... Well, right. I'm still, I'm still, on, still, my, I'm still on my legal... Right, because manufacturing my is not defect side, but yes. But we're covering up... Absolutely. We're covering the problems that we have with um, uh, the, the pump fuel itself. So let's get into some numbers, uh, some test numbers here. So I think I'm going to start off actually with the with the torques because this yeah. is how, how it came to and us. And it was a that was a it's a lot tougher than you think. This is <clears throat> so honest. these are these are third party analysis uh, on a ASTM D6079. I think it's on our website there. The multi treat level torque ship. And this is the VP racing fuel, the diesel fuel that a lot of the racers were, were using that came to us at first saying, hey, we need to, we think we're having an issue here. So we looked at this and as you can see on, on the first test, the baseline test, the wear scar was a 590.5, which is crazy. That's really, that's, that's extremely, extremely dry. And that's where a lot of these racers are having their give and take. They, yeah. There are some benefits to that fuel. People are finding oh, gains with they're, it. They're it get, definitely you can make gains. power with yeah. it, but it's at the expense of your fuel system and expensive components. So as you can see in the next three uh, columns there, now you, you're you the, the ratio guy, I'm not. Okay. So at one to 1280. It's one ounce per 10 gallons. We brought that 590 wear scar down to a 484. At one to 512, which is twice the dosage, so it's two ounces, it went down to a 481.5, which is unique. The first one brought it 106 yeah, points. Right. The second one only moved it three more. And then get this. The third dose brought it down to a 461.5. Right. So that's something you you often see when you talk about the lubricity uh, stuff. You'll see like these bell curves, like where... Yeah, they're definitely not linear. Right. And it's, you never know where... Where that curve is going to go? Which is why you way, guys over test that because you, it's not always I can move the wear scar so much, you know, at this dosage well, level. That's therefore, right. it's, and then sometimes it, it'll, it'll spike. It, yeah. So what we do know at a one to two hundred and fifty six treatment on Torx DX that measures as high as five hundred and ninety, you got it down to four hundred and sixty one point five, right. darn near the four hundred and sixty wear scar right. that we that we know a CP four pump can right. safely operate on without having any damage to it. Um, so that's pretty impressive to get a fuel that is that dry, also going through these type of high performance vehicles. Um, so you know darn well, at least a lot of these high performance racing trucks are all running on CP4s now. You would not believe all your daily drivers out there how many CP4s are out there. I mean, they're, they're used in, in all the makes and models. Um, going back, what, over, back to 2000? Four, six, six, 
I think it's, I think we got a list somewhere. 2019. All the way to 2019. <laughs> That's the thing Cummins just switched over to them. After everybody knew they had problems with them. I said, like, what are you doing, Cummins? Like, so they're all they're all in the middle of their lawsuits right now. You guys have probably seen the class action lawsuits going against all the manufacturers. Yeah. Um, is that it there, Levi? Yep. Look at that. 11 to 16 Silverados, uh, 2,500 GMCs. Uh, Chevy Expresses are on there. They're back to 2010 with the Sierras. 2014, the present on all the Fords, on the 6.7s. Um, uh oh, Audi's got it too. Jeep Grand Cherokee's <laughs> got it. I mean, you name it, there's a lot of vehicles on the road using this pump. So um, the fact that we've been able to test at a very high level of performance and very tight tolerances and these, these huge systems that are really demanding a lot out of the fuel system and on fuel that's that super dry to get it down mm -hmm. in spec is a great thing. Now, let's take it down to a more common uh, driving fuel. We've got a couple tests here where we do a test where we take, we want to measure it from what we call the shore tank, which is the right. refinery, right? Yeah, it's totally unadditized. So no lubricity additive. So it no is nothing in definitely it. out of spec. So we Correct. get it straight from there. And then we did another test, pump diesel after it's been through all the jobber's hands, yeah. additized, all that other stuff. Correct. So uh, believe it or not, the additized or the, the shore tank from the refinery was at 590 wear scar which was the same as the, about that yeah you know so <laughs> that, that is as dry as the racing fuel yeah was. usually it's in the 610 to 611 613 right range that was actually one of the lower ones that i've seen right and they also had the uh oh wow we're running late oops all right so we'll button up quick <laughs> Um, my, I my, my watch wrong. So when we're looking at that, that unadditized fuel, mm. we actually got it down to, and a one to 1280 is the dosage we went with, right? Right. So we tried it with one to 1280. We brought that 590 wear scar all the way down to a 260. So well within the, 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 the 460, uh, yeah. range that we need, you know, and then we, as he did, did he did a double dose. And found it only moved that 260 down to 250. So we settled at the 260. So that's what you get with a one to 10 ounce treatment. You can yeah. move a 590 unanitized fuel all the way down to 260. Now, um, we won't talk about the number one today. Well, we just did. Well, we, 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 we actually, we, we targeted uh. some of the best out there <laughs> and um, you can check the data on, on, the, on, on, our, on our website. Under the same test on the 12 to 1280 dosage, the former number one on the market uh, brought that 590 down to a 440. Uh, so we were almost a couple it's in, hundred it's in on the spec. Way It is in spec. We're it's not, the best we found. So kudos to them. Everybody else wasn't even close to that. They weren't even moving lubricity at all. And now when we look at the pump fuel, the opening spec, this was the best fuel I think we've ever tested. <laughs> it is. It was 363. So that's the baseline. So the baseline was well within spec. So we probably should have waited and found some worse <laughs> fuel. Um, but it goes to show, even on, even on a 363 spec fuel, our 1 to 1280, doesn't say there, is it here? Yep. Yeah, 1 to 1280 brought it down to a 236.5, and a 1 to 512 brought it down to a 194.5. So a lot of people will say, will ask us, especially now that they know that the LX4 is in the EDT, number one question I get, now that they know how much we can drop wear scar in the LX4, how much can you drop it in the EDT that has the LX4 in it? What we always shoot for is that goal of we assume the worst. We assume that you have a 520 wear scar, really dry fuel, and we want to get you down to that 460 where it's safe. So we want to, at a minimum, drop you 60 wear scar, 60 microns of wear scar. How do I move it 60 microns of wear scar with EDT? Two ounces per 25 gallons. Two ounces per 25 gallons. Look at that. I knew, I knew the. Yep, it's that simple. One so, to 1600 is right. how I speak. So you can either use our LX4 or if you're using our EDT at its performance dose, you always know that there's enough lubricity in there to get the right. worst fuel in America inside that European spec, inside that American motor manufacturer, motor manufacturer spec, and preserve a CP4 pump from shredding and ruining your fuel system. Um, and causing you a really bad day. <laughs> so 
Uh, we run a little bit over, but I hate leaving people hanging if anybody has any questions. Let's see. Steve Schwanger's in. What's up, buddy? Uh, Steven Weaver. Uh, looks like Troy's got something again. Troy Kennedy. Are marine-grade lubricants being considered for future developments? Marine engines are made specifically with loose tolerances, and of course, many are in storage. Grease and oils for the outdrives are an issue as well for both salt and freshwater areas. It's on the list. It's on the list. It, Marine's up. I think it's next year. Right. When we finally roll it out, but we do have uh, we do have Marine on the market list, so we already have some yes. good stuff for them. But uh, yes, yeah, Troy. It's... City Fisher's in. I. Got... My mom tunes in every week, so hi, mom. Love you too. <laughs> Mike Clapper says LX4 is now in the everyday diesel treatment. Correct. Got to use up my old bottle of EDT and get some of that new formula. Exactly, Mike Clapper. The uh, uh, if you look at the bottle of EDT, it'll either have an EDT or I'm sorry, an LX4 sticker added to it on the neck. Or it'll be right, right here. or it'll be right on the label itself. It'll you'll see an LX4 logo in the label. Uh, is it on that one? Yep, you can see uh, the LX4 on the label right there. If it does not have that on the label, or it doesn't have a sticker up on the neck, you found yourself an old bottle of EDT, which we think our our, our retailers are probably run through, but you never know. Sometimes our retailers buy in so much bulk, it takes them months and months to months to get through. But you can always check to see if that logo's on there. If it is, you're, you're good to go. And we are caught up. So let's let's give out some. Anyone from South Dakota? No one from South Dakota. <laughs> Eric giving Wilkes, away two bottles. Eric Wilkes, you're always tuning in and asking good questions. So you get a bottle. And how about uh, Charlie Ciceretti? Charlie Ciceretti and Eric Wilkes, why don't you shoot uh, us a message, a private message on our Facebook page. Levi, give me your address. Levi will get back to you, and we will get some LX4 shipped out to you. Thanks for tuning in and asking questions today. And if I missed anybody, I apologize because uh, I had to reboot, and sometimes it didn't show me all the questions when we do that. Okay. And until next time, I think uh, no, we'll all be here next week. So any closing thoughts on LX4 we didn't cover that you wanted to hit? You skimmed it. I skimmed it? The, yeah the motivation in your synapses of their data. So. Okay. I skimmed it. Gotcha. All right. But all our data is up Oops. on the website on, uh, on the LX4 yeah, page. So it, yeah. Save your CP, CP4 pumps, save your fuel system. Add lubricity. We got dry fuel. You racers out there, especially if you're running that race fuel, you definitely need it. So protect right. the system. If you're watching this later, be sure to ask your questions below. We'll try to follow up. And um, if not, we'll see you next week. We'll be here every week at 1.30 p.m. Have a good weekend.